the Bertucci brand is known for making watches at a really affordable price. They're really popular for people who want a failed watch but don't really care about the luxury brands and spending the money associated with those brands. So in this video, I wanna go over the features of these watches and go over some alternative watches to look at. Bertucci is one of those brands that's kind of a one trick pony. They only do filled watches. That's basically all they're known for. Which that's not necessarily a bad thing. A lot of brands, you almost get overwhelmed looking at all their options. But when you decide to look at Bertucci, you know you're buying a filled watch. Besides color, there's only a couple options you have to choose between. Since they only do one type of watch and they started in 2004, they really just don't have all that many reference models and different options to look at. As opposed to if you look at something like Casio, it becomes just overwhelming instantly. So when going over the features, I want to start with what the baseline is and then talk about extra options after that, kind of what their add-ons are. So to immediately start with price, if you want a really, really basic watch, no special features, you're going to be looking at between $55 and $75 on most sites. So if you don't know what a filled watch is, it's basically a watch that the entire point of it is to be really simple and legible, so it's easy to read. So if there's nothing fancy about it, it's only supposed to be to tell time, not really using any other feature with it. Like historically, it's a military design, so you wanted it to be quick and easy to reference. Like as far as dial feature sets here, basically all of them just have a 12 hour clock and then on the inside of the 12 hour hand is the 24 hour clock military time. So where one is, it's 13, two says 14, etc. That way, if you're in the military or any job that uses the 24 hour clock, you can just glance at that part of the watch and know it instantly, not try to do the head math there. So for dial features, they do have one model that has a chronograph on it, which if you're not familiar, just lets you track time basically. So it can be used as a stopwatch or the most common feature is to track speed like in racing. There's some other niche uses of it like tracking heart rate. That's normally not what you'll see it used for. It's normally just for racing or a stopwatch. And that model is significantly more expensive at $400, which those complications are quite a bit more complicated. So it kind of makes sense that there's that upcharge. I don't think the brand's probably making massively more profit off that model. For the overall brand, one thing that's a nice feature across every single watch, even their bottom tier ones, are they have a pretty nice amount of illumination. This means that the hour marks and the hands will glow if you expose them to light and then that light source is cut off. At least on mine, if you're in complete darkness, you can't read the numbers, but you can count the dots or the hour markers, so it's still pretty intuitive to know what time it is. Not everyone will need this, but I think it's a pretty nice feature personally. The nice part about this is if you're wearing it during the day and it's exposed like it is here on my arm, it will actually kind of soak in that light and then be able to use it later to glow in the dark. So it's just completely passively. You don't have to do anything for it to do this. So you don't have to press any buttons. You don't have to set a special mode. You'll just be able to see it when the lights go out. The negative part of this though, is that you do have to charge it for the illumination to work. One option you have for the illumination is to actually inverse this, where the dial itself will be what glows. I honestly haven't owned one of these, but from what I've seen and what is kind of common sense, it's a larger surface to actually take in that light, and then it's more surface to glow, so it should work a little better if you actually need to read it at night without purposely charging it up. Like if it's a smaller degree of charge you have on it, it might work better. I think for actual functionality, it doesn't matter. I think if you go with this option, it's because you like how it looks, which is totally fair. I mean, watches, let's be honest, are really a fashion piece, not something most of us really need in most situations. So if you go with this option, it brings it up to, I think 175 is the entry level for it. I'm sure you can shop around and maybe find it a little bit cheaper. But it is a pretty unique look. It's not something you see very often. So for 175 or a pretty unique looking watch, that's a pretty interesting option. All Bertucci watches will use a quartz movement, which means it's battery powered. If you're not into watches, that's pretty standard. 
they'll typically last about two to three years. That can vary on what battery you buy and what watch it is and how complicated the movement is and how efficient it runs. But I'd say two to three years is pretty average. Most of them will use a Japanese movement. A couple of them are Swiss. Once again, probably doesn't matter to 90% of people. But if you want a Swiss movement or you prefer Japanese, they do have both options. I personally love mechanical watches. But they do need maintenance every once in a while. And in this case, the maintenance would be significantly more than what you're actually spending on the watch itself. And they would have to significantly increase their price. So I think Quartz is really the only way to go in this price range. One option they do have though is they actually offer a solar model. This is where the face of the watch itself is basically a small little solar cell that charges up the battery over time as you wear it outside. This means you basically never need to replace the battery because it's always recharging itself. Because watch batteries are so efficient, it can basically just run it indefinitely. So I, I don't have a Bertucci that does this, but I do have a Casio Tough Solar that does basically the same thing. And my wife has a, I don't know if it's technically a baby G-Shock or not, but a Casio watch too that has the same feature and they work great. I've had those watches for, I'd say at least five years. I've never had to change a battery. I have had them go dead because they haven't seen the sunlight, but then you set them in a windowsill for about two days and they're back fine, good as new. The only negative to them is I cycle through watches pretty frequently, or I'll go on work trips and not take that watch. So if it sits in a dresser for a really long time and you don't wear it and then you go to put it on, it might be dead and then you have to let it recharge for a day or two. For an EDC watch, I really like this feature. It's not something a lot of higher end watches will have necessarily, but it does keep you from changing out batteries so it can save you some money there or to save you the hassle of having to replace batteries. And for these, they start at 195, so you are paying a premium, but it is a nice feature. When it comes to straps, every watch will either come with a nylon strap, which is what I have on here, or it will come with a leather strap. These are what are called NATO straps, which are pretty standard. It's what basically every field watch has. And the nice thing about that is there's a million different options online. You can go find one you really like and for probably 10 or 15 bucks, swap it out. Like if you're new to watches, a lot of times what you can do is just focus on this part of the watch here and then change out the actual strap if you want. And it's a really easy, really cheap upgrade that can completely change the look and feel of a watch. So if you're shopping for one, just remember that's something you can swap out. If you don't like how the strap looks, don't really worry about it. The final thing I want to talk about as far as features is the actual case of the watch, which is just this part here along the outside that actually holds everything together. The entry level one here will be a bioceramic, which is a glorified way of saying hard plastic. One of the benefits of this material, besides the price, is it's very lightweight. Like you barely even notice you're wearing it. While for a lot of EDC material, people really, really want it to be as light as humanly possible, one thing that's kind of backwards on watches is a lot of people actually want them to feel heavier, and the reason they want it to feel heavier is it just feels more quality. Like it feels like a more well put together robust watch. So some people don't care and they want it to be lightweight, it's entirely personal preference. I don't really mind it being lightweight. I don't have a huge preference one way or the other, but just something to be aware of. So if you don't like the idea of a plastic case, they do have a titanium option. So I personally love titanium for everyday carry gear. It's one of my favorite choices of material, and it's nice that they do have that option. If you do want to go titanium though, you will have to go up to around $150. So it is pretty significantly more expensive. And at that point, you are getting into some other competitive options. But if you like these watches and you want to do titanium, that is there for you. I guess one last thing for size, they offer 30 and 35 millimeter options and they offer up to 45 millimeter, which the 45 millimeter is pretty large for a watch and they are pretty expensive. They're like $395 of that size range. So I don't think that's what most people are going to go for. 
but just knows that is their size range, and they have basically everything in between. Like, I think most of theirs are in the 40 millimeter range, and that's gonna be pretty average. So now I wanna go into my overarching review of the brand. So for their more entry level options for the price, I think they are a great choice. Like, I don't think you're gonna be disappointed by it. Like, especially if you're on a tight budget and you like kind of that old school military style, it's basically exactly what you're gonna want. And like I said, swapping out the straps, you can basically make it look however you want. Like you won't be getting all the fancy features, but you're probably not looking for them at under $100. Like I said, if you shop around, I think you can find them for 50 to 55 bucks. The other thing is if you're looking for just the utility of a watch, like you actually wanna use it just to tell time, it's not really a fashion statement, they hold up well, they have really good illumination, and they're very simple to read. There's no buttons you have to control. There's nothing fancy. They're very straightforward, easy to use. Like not everyone's at a job where you can actually have your cell phone with you. And a lot of times when I go hiking, I take my cell phone, but I like to turn it off and have it in my bag just so I'm not tempted to look at it or see test messages or get on Facebook or anything. So in those cases, I like to have a watch with me just to be able to tell time to know how long I've been gone. And they're really good for that because they're durable, but they're still cheap enough that if you do fall and hit it on a rock, you're not going to be too disappointed. For negatives, let's be honest, most of us wear a watch for fashion. Like, it's kind of a status symbol. We like how it looks. Even if it's not for other people, it's for us. And this is a pretty simple watch. Like, I will say, honestly, I think this is one of the only watches that I've never had someone say they like it. I've never gotten a compliment on it. Not saying people say anything bad about it. It's just not an attention getter. It's not really a conversation starter. Even if someone does bring it up and ask you what it is, there's not a lot to say about it besides like, oh, it's a good economic choice. A lot of people like watches because it makes a statement or there's a story. I feel like wearing one of these watches is kind of like having a CRKT knife. Really good for the money makes total sense. It's a really reasonable choice, but people that are really into it aren't going to be super impressed, so a lot of people would rather just not bother. But I think if you're getting one, you won't be disappointed either. It's definitely going to do the job. Let's go over recommendations of what I would recommend instead if you like the overall style of this, but want something a little bit different. So under the $100 mark, actually nothing. This is the watch I would recommend. I don't think there's anything really comparable at that price point. I think what happens is when you start adding in some of the other features and you get closer to $150, that's where the competition gets a little more interesting. So at the $150 mark, I would recommend the Seiko 5. So the Seiko 5 does have a field watch option, which is the one I personally have here. I don't know if the camera's gonna focus on that. So the real advantage here is that you're getting an automatic movement. So once again, I don't know if the camera will focus, but you can actually see it through a sapphire crystal here that there's no battery powering this. So it's actually powered by you walking around. And it's really cool that you can actually see how it works when you look at the back. So the second hand will have more of a sweeping movement than a tick, tick, tick. So that's just a little kind of visual thing, but I think it's a nice touch. As far as like actual feature sets, that automatic movement is the only thing different. As far as pros, it means that you don't need a battery, so you never have to replace one. But there is a negative with it. It means that if you're not moving around and you leave it sit for a few days, you do have to recharge it. So some people love it, some people hate it. I personally like the mechanical watches. I don't mind resetting them. I just kind of appreciate the craftsmanship that goes into that. So on the upper end of Bertucci watches where you're getting closer to that $400 range, then I would start looking at Hamilton. Hamilton has a long history of field watches. I want to say they were used in World War II and it's one of the icons in that industry. Hamilton is probably the biggest name in field watches. They make really good stuff. Like I said, I have a Hamilton, but it's not a field watch, so I can't make that one-to-one -one comparison. That wraps up my thoughts on Bertucci watches. 
If you own one, let me know what your experience is with it in the comments so other people can go read that and have opinions kind of beyond mine. Like, let me know if you love it. Let me know if it's had issues, how much you actually enjoy wearing it. Thank you for watching.